Hey everyone, thanks for watching this week's episode of Break the Glass. Today we're gonna to be doing something a little bit different. We're not gonna be talking about tasting wine and different tasting notes and flavors and like regions. Um, if you wanna enjoy a good bottle of wine, you gotta have the tools to do it. So we're gonna talk about how to open up a bottle of wine, store it properly, and then what every wine drinker should have in their drawer. So we're gonna, this is what I always have on hand. So I've got, we're gonna talk about like from, you know, start to finish, how to open up a bottle of wine and then store it, right? So we're gonna start with the corkscrew, super essential, aerator, pourer, stopper, and then champagne cork. Um, and then also we have some other fun little things. So first things first, if you want to enjoy a great bottle of wine, you're more likely than not going to need a, a corkscrew. Um, and I mean, I know there are some bottles out there that are the screw cap. There are some really good bottles that have screw caps, but there's a lot of wines that just have corks. Like in Italy, if you wanted a bottle of like Italian wine, you will rarely see a screw cap. It's going to probably be a cork. This is a bottle from Mendoza. I was just at the grocery store and got something easy. But yeah, so let's talk about how to open up the bottle. I had no idea how to do it when I first started drinking wine. I remember I was in Argentina and my friend Mackenzie, she was like horrified that I had no idea how to open up a bottle. This was like before I knew anything about wine. But it honestly is kind of tricky. I think my boyfriend didn't know how to open it up either until I taught him, so. Um, so first off, this is my favorite type of corkscrew because there's the little knife thing and that cuts off the foil. So this foil, you want this off of there. Don't open up your bottle of wine without taking the foil off. You don't want any sort of foily taste getting into that bottle. That's gonna totally disrupt the flavors of the wine. You want this off. I just like to like open up the knife and just like slit it off. Like I call it my pocket knife. Um, and then open up this guy. What I learned, how I learned how to do it was so you start off, you put the middle of the corkscrew, like the pointy part, like right, well, so you kind of lay it down a little bit flat so that this is going, like, so the pointy part is in the middle, like dead center of the wine cork, and then you kind of just like tilt it in, and then you start screwing it in. And then my favorite wine corkscrews have like two different like levers to it. So the first one, shorter, pop that up, and then a second motion, and then boom, bottle of wine is open. Okay, and so now that our bottle of wine is open, which is definitely, arguably, the most important part of this whole process, now there's a few different ways that you can, you know, enjoy the wine and enhance it even more. So this is an aerator. It's a T-Rex, it's super cute. Um, so aerators, I definitely would not suggest it for all wines. So this guy is a really big oaky cab, right? So it's a Cabernet Sauvignon, which is one of the bigger wines. This bottle was $5 at the grocery store. It's still a really good bottle of wine, but it's not the best ever. If you have a really elegant, beautiful, well-aged bottle of wine that's really special, don't use the aerator. The aerator totally disrupts the flavors of the wine. A really great bottle of wine, like probably shouldn't have an aerator. But this guy, for an easy drinking, you know, it just smooths the flavor out. It doesn't hurt. Um, and not to say that I don't enjoy drinking this wine. This is a good bottle of wine, but like the aerator just kind of like, it just smooths things out. It puts some air into the wine as you're pouring it. And it's a T-Rex, so it's really cute. So yeah, so you just like pop that guy on, he stays on nice and firm. Then the wine goes through it and he puts some air in there. See how it kind of like, like opens up the wine a little bit more. And then another fun little tool to have in your wine tool belt is this um, little wine pourer. So these were really great for the tastings that I used to run at the wine shop. You know, you have your friend that comes over into your house, just like we had our customers that would come in and they just wanted really heavy pours. They want like a lot of wine, but you don't wanna give them all of that wine. So this keeps you from pouring too much. You know how normally you like pour a glass of wine, right? 
and it just kind of like gushes out. Like it can like gush out pretty easily. Oh, and then you have to like wipe up the wine after because it's flowing down the bottle and making a mess. And you, they're really pretty label that you don't want wine getting all stained over. So this pour is really great for that. So you pour this guy in, or put him in, and then it just pops out these really gentle little nice pours. So you can kind of control how much you're giving your consumers, I guess. <laughs> and then it keeps the bottle clean. So if you have like a really beautiful label that you, for a bottle that you've want, been wanting to save and you're excited to drink, you know, a really special important bottle of wine, these guys will, will save that label. Okay, and so now it's the end of the night. You don't want any more wine. Somehow you didn't finish an entire bottle on your own in an entire evening. So you're like, oh shoot, what do I do? And you could put the, the cork back on, but I think like having a stopper is really nice. So this is this little wine stopper that I have. And then it um, kind of just keeps like the air from coming in more. It has like a, a sealed, you know, little cap to it. And you put it in and then your wine is secure and protected for maybe like three days. Red wine, I think you open that bottle up, you should probably drink it within three to four days. Um, if there's like, if it gets like air in the bottle, it gets oxidated and then it just kind of has this little stringent taste and you start tasting the alcohol in the wine more so than the, the fruit and what it's supposed to taste like. So if you have a bottle of red wine, probably three to four days, I would finish that guy up. A white wine, you could go like five, days, sometimes seven, but I would say five. All right, and now probably the hardest bottle of wine you'll have to open up. Bottle of bubbly. You know, you like watch movies and TV shows or like, you know, you probably did it yourself, but it's just kind of fun to like be ridiculous and open up a bottle of bubbly and the cork just like flies across the room and like breaks a lamp or like hits someone in the eye. Well, if you want to avoid that, um, this is how you have a controlled open on a bottle of bubbly. So it's gonna have this, most bottles have like this layer of foil over it. Again, you want that off of there. This, you literally cannot open it up if the foil is still on. So you just rip that off just like so. I just got a bottle of Prosecco just for the sake of opening this up. And this is the, the crown. And there's this little black loopy thing and it's a circle, you're gonna wanna pull that down from the, like the wall of the cork. And then it's just like, it's a little in a corkscrew little position. It's like kind of wound up. You're just gonna like unwind it until you see that it's totally open now. So the crown is still on here. That's not gonna go anywhere. Like the cork is really in there. It's not gonna go anywhere super easily but you still kind of want to have like a controlled open on it just in case you don't want to like take anyone's eye off. So the cage of the, the cork, just the wiry part, just pop that guy off. This one's on here. Cool. And then I always close it, keep it for good luck. And then, so this part is the hardest one. So you want to have Left hand, I always like to put it, open it up on a table, like on a flat surface. So like left hand on the neck and then push down on the cork with your right hand. So I'm pushing down right now, but then also twisting my hand and the bottle bubbly at the same time. And then it opens up. So that way it's just not a crazy loud, obnoxious explosion. Okay, so now we've got this bottle of bubbly wine open and you're hanging out with friends, you're sitting on the patio, you don't want to keep, you know, running from the, the lawn to the refrigerator where you have your bubbly wine just sitting. You want to have it with you, right? So I suggest getting one of these guys. So this is like a wine koozie sleeve thing. Um, I don't know what the actual word for it is. But it's like a, it's a freezer pack. So there's like ice packs inside of it. It's lined with ice packs. You just keep it in your freezer and then you bring it out for when you want to have your bottle bubbly. So I would honestly probably, yeah, just slide that in there, bring it with you to the patio and then you're good to go. It'll stay cool for like a couple hours. It's super awesome. And then yeah, then you can 
Just go ahead, pour your bottle of bubbly, and then share it, don't share it, just keep it by your side while you're watching a movie, whatever works. And then hey, say you're not finished with the bottle by the end of the night, and especially with bubbly wine, you really want to have a stopper on there because the wine's just going to go flat overnight. It's a little, it'll go flat in a couple hours. Usually, the second I open up a bottle of bubbly, there's still wine in there. Even if you know I'm probably going to finish it throughout dinner, I put my, my champagne stopper right back on here. And so the champagne stopper, like suction cups, this close together so that um, air isn't getting in. And your bottle of bubbles will stay bubbly for probably like two to three days with, with this thing. They're super, super, super helpful. Probably, I think, one of my favorite wine accessories that I have. Okay, and to finish up, just a couple little random things that I think are really fun to have on hand that enhance my wine tool belt even more. Um, so I love this water bottle. It, I use it so much, as you can tell, it's like totally banged up. But, so this water bottle, we got it at the wine shop that I used to work at, and it, it's called like a water bottle, right? But it's like, it's the exact size of a typical bottle of wine. So I think it's actually meant for, for a wine bottle. But you can pour, like say you're going, you know, on the boat, as if I have a boat. Um, so you're, you know, like your average trip on the boat, um, and you're bringing like your bottle of rosé, but you don't want it to get too warm while it's sitting out in the 90 degree weather all day long. You can open this guy up, an entire bottle of wine will fit in there. And I've used it, well, we bring it to the lake with us. I don't have a boat. Um, we bring it to the lake. Um, and we just like sit outside on the shore and it just like sits in the water bottle. Um, all day long. I think we've had it for like four or five hours in this bottle and it stays cold. It's super, super awesome. Um, it's just like one of those like Swell or like Yeti or Hydro Flask bottles that are out there. Um, this guy is called True. I think it's maybe like True Tap or something's a company, but I think that's super handy for bringing wine on the go. And then another fun little thing that you can get are little wine charms. So your friends come over, and you all have the same glass of wine and it all looks the same. Wine charms are a cute little way of kind of deciphering, okay, whose bottle is whose. You just choose your favorite color. This one's mine, it's gold. Um, and then you can just, you know, screw it onto the stem and then you have your glass of wine for the night. But then, you know, say you don't have wine charms or you're just really aggressive and you don't want anyone drinking your bottle or your glass of wine. And get a wine marker. These are called um, vino markers and you just write directly on them. They'll wash off in the dishwasher. You can like scrub it off. It's totally fine. But you can write like your name on it. Super big so no one takes your glass of wine. Yeah, we used to, um, at the shop that I used to work at, um, I would write on people's glasses when we poured wine for them. Sometimes I'd write like, there were like big events. I'd write like happy birthday on someone's glass. And then they'd walk around with the glass all night and people would just be like, oh, it's your birthday. And then it kind of was just super funny. Um, but yeah, so I think those are really fun. But yeah, those are just, I, that was an overwhelming amount of wine accessories and tools. Really all you need I would say the corkscrew, super helpful. After that, the, the bubbly stopper comes in handy so often. I love this thing so much. Um, I think the water bottle is really helpful too for keeping things cold. Regardless though, these are all just little like knickknacks that you can have in your drawer. Um, Christmas is coming up too, so if you have a friend that's really into wine, any of these would be super awesome gifts. Yeah, just I think they're just nice little ways of enhancing your wine experience. And well, that's about it. Hope you guys have a great holiday and we'll drink some more wine soon.